good afternoon everybody uh, today i am going to discuss about the imaging in radio uh, neuro oncological practice <clears throat> so which image i should ask how to read the images how to, what is the uh, um, uh, what, what uh, prescription i should give to the radiologist it is all about this uh, presentation so before understanding the radiation uh, neuro or uh, we should understand the what we want really as a radiation oncologist we want clear identification of the target and organ at risk and we need a good resolution image why it is so important because if you take a extra tissue there will be uh, some, uh, side effect if you take uh, miss some tissue you will have a local recurrence so in our situation, we have a metastasis, vestibular schwannoma, meningioma, AVM, pituitary, re-radiation, trigeminal neuralgia, glomus jugulare, cavernous, hamartoma, cyst, and spine. All these situations we come across day by day. What immunizations you have? We have a CT scan, plane, contrast, cystinography, CT angio. In MRI, we have a plane, contrast, double contrast, triple contrast, cystinography, MR angio. Uh, MRS and other functional sequences, nuclear imaging and digital substruction and angiogram. As you know, by basic things we before uh, doing that, you need slicing, windowing, CT number, measure of the density, contrast, what is FOV and bore. So slicing, any imaging body slice so, uh, is known as slicing. And uh, if you side to side view is called sagittal view, anterior posterior view is the coronal view, top to bottom view is the axial view. So this is the coronal anterior posterior, horizontal view or axial views, sagittal view is the side to side. So if you see this is the true axial, this is the middle one is the sagittal and uh, right one is your coronal. So before that we have to understand window width and window level. So as you know this there are, there are two things we can change the window. Uh, I will uh, later part of the my presentation how to change the window width and window level and how to change the contrast everything I will uh, give a demo. So brightness is the full brightness of the image. This is known as a window level and image inside image like uh, the, in this right side image the face is looks more brighter than the other part of the body. So this is called contrast. So how to understand this just uh, select window panel in your uh, um, uh, um, imaging system and drag your mouse horizontally your contrast will change and uh, drag your mouse vert horizon vertically your level or brightness will change so windowing is uh, again very important as a neuro imaging we have in three windows brain window bone window and subdural window so this is the windowing to where to see more soft tissues more uh, bone and more subdural area. What is the difference between the bore and uh, FOV? Bore is the total diameter of the end-to-end -end diameter of the CT scan opening. FOV is the end-to-end -end diameter of the imaging aperture. So this is a small FOV, this is the full, full FOV. This is the uh, thing uh, we have to understand what is the difference between the bore and the FOV. As you know, CT scan like brain, it is isodense, less than darker is hypodense, more than brain, it is whiter, it is known as hyperdense. MRI is iso intense, hypo intense, and hyper intense. So, most of the radiolucent structures are like A, spinal fluid, ischemic infarct, edema, white matter. So, uh, this looks darker. Radiodense like bone, metal, calcium, blood, and gray matter looks brighter in the um, CT scan. Hansfeld unit, another uh, a thing is CT number different from different tissue related to the composition of tissue. So mostly Hansfeld unit is 1000 for the A minus 1000 and plus 1000 for the bone, water is 0 like pH. So plus G7 plus uh, 0 is the water and sub tissue and all highest range extreme is the bone. Here left side extreme is the AR and uh, long is the minus 500. So this year the, he is the Hansfeld unit who invented the uh, CT scan. Uh, the, uh, these are the various Hansfeld units of the various like air minus 1000, PET minus 70, pure water 0, CSF plus 8, all these things are 
there. So you can measure your Hunsfeld units to understand the constituency of the con, uh, constituent of the organ. You just take uh, HU value, click on a HU value or on the system and you can see the various uh, windowing and as well as the HU value, you can see the Hunsfeld units. The A is, is minus 758, here vertebra is the 278. So, and uh, like that contrast area is 250. So, this is the uh, thing what you can know. Apart from that, we for the better delineation and we have to give contrast. The two types of contrast, in either ionic contrast and anionic contrast, now mostly non-ionic contrast is useful. Then what is the MRI brain in sequences in stereotaxy? So, imaging if you are understanding the anatomical properties, you have to go for the structural imaging. If it is, uh, um, um, you are going for the uh, um, activity of the brain functioning like uh, functional images, like the measuring the brain activity, tractography represents the white primate tracts. So, what is the sequence? Usually, the companies are known as Philips, GE, Toshiba, Siemens, Sitaji, lots of companies in the sim. MRI uh, vendors are there, but the unfortunate thing is that the same sequence is in a different name uh, in the different company. So, what is the sequence? The events happens during the acquiring of MRI image known as a sequence. How to do that? They are playing with it, uh, relaxation time, eco time, and uh, this T uh, radio frequency. This uh, playing with this, the various imagings are produced according to our need. So, if you give short T, short TR, it is the T1. Short T, long TR, it is the uh, long T, uh, long T, long TR, it is the T2. So, these are the out of scope of a radiation oncologist. Only we can understand for what is that actually. So, what is a T1 sequence? As you know, T1 is the main sequence T1. Uh, you can see if you want to really study the one. Uh, uh, anatomy of the uh, any brain, you have to study the T1 sequence. T1 is the fat is the bright, water is the black, normal anatomy, we can see the vascular changes. White matter looks white, inside the white matter, outside the gray matter. If you give contrast, the vascular components and uh, other parts enhance. This is the contrast and this looks here for intense. Then T2 sequence, the flip side of the T1, where water was darker in the T1, here in T2, water is the brighter. So, all the CSF areas, including aqua simmer, vitreous simmer, everything is looks brighter, but uh, blood vessels looks darker. So, you can see here, this blood vessel looks darker in the posterior part and aqua simmer, vitreous simmer, it looks brighter. What is the flare sequence? Flare sequence is the flare, it is a flip side of the T2. It is the known as a flared attenuation inversion recovery. Is the you can see the ventricular oozing. The images within ventricular oozing is known as a flare sequence. Here CSF looks black and mostly pathological fluids looks white. When you are differentiating pathological fluid from the normal fluid, you uh, have to take you have to understand the player sequence where you can uh, study the um, uh, pathological fluid. You can see two images here. T2 is the player sequence. Uh, T2 is the uh, normal T2. Here is the tumor in the right uh, hemisphere. Here in a player image, you can see the CSF becomes darker and the pathological. Here all fluids look on T2. All fluids look on, looks whiter brighter when play only the pathological fluid looks darker why uh, by brighter so now identify yourself t1 t2 and player in t1 uh, you can see see the csf is black blindly you can tell is a t1 if csf is white you can blindly tell it is a t2 but if there is a ventricular oozing you can blindly tell about it is a player image so, MR diffusion, another sequence is there, MR diffusion, uh, it is very important to understand the movement of the water molecule along the um, neurons. So, if there is a good water diffusion as well, normal sequence, it will not uh, bright, but if there is a restriction, 
there may be high malignant cells number of malignant cells are more more brighter and if you see this mri diffusion uh, looks brighter and this is called uh, restricted diffusion to understand the how much diffusion is there we have to understand the adc map dwi is the diffusion weighted image adc map is the adc map so adc map is the measuring so where uh, it is a just t2 uh, diffusion weighted image you the brighter in the diffusion weighted image it is uh, uh, darker in the adc map if you see who grade 1 tumor the diffusion coefficient is 2.5 apparent diffusion coefficient adc value and who grade 4 glioma it is um, 0.66 so more malignant less adc value more normal tissue it is the normal adc value more adc value so if you think the adc values are less think that it looks more malignant for a disease specific mri sequences you have to study if you want to study normal anatomy you have to go for the 3d fsbgr sequence if you want to study the pituitary adenoma you ask for the star sequence apart from the t1 t2 and t3 uh, t1 t2 flare images you have to ask the your radiologist in this sequences you have to stand because in pituitary adenoma you have to differentiate between the uh, pecking material and pituitary you have to call for the star sequence trigeminal sequence neuralgia you have asked for the uh, fiesta sequence fiesta sequence uh, is a sequence where you can see the cisterna csf cavities cranial nerve tracts is it looks very uh, good resolution another cranial nerve you want to study you can got uh, cis sequence cp angle tumors when there is a confusion of the meningioma and schwannoma you have to go for the gradient echo sequence in gradient echo sequence will differentiate if there is a malignant um, there is a hemorrhage or there is a uh, bleeding you will get blooming uh, but if there is but mostly in schwannomas but many neumas never bloom out gliomas you have to do the diffusion sequence perfusion sequence avms you have to go for angio mr angio grading of tumors if you want to do you can go for the mrs if you have a planning for the metastasis you have to go for the triple double delayed contrast and diffusion and perfusion sequences so fspgr sequence you can see you have to study uh, it is a clear normal brain tumor brain brain tissue you can see how the optic nerve optic chiasm and pituitary stocks are very nicely uh, delineated here so fspgr sequence is known as a fast spoiled gradient echo sequence ask your radiologist to understand the proper anatomy when you are contouring the hippocampus and everything you go for the fspgr sequence then but fspgr sequence is in the g sequence but other uh, as, I, as i told there will be a difference in philips it is a 3d t1 uh, ffb sequence siemens is a imperial sequence so according to your machine you request your radiologist uh, you, this sequence is uh, required fiesta sequence is known as a fiesta imaging employing steady-state equation here we can see various uh, cisternas uh, csf spaces very nicely and you can see the uh, here you can see the cochlea uh, sorry uh, seventh and eighth nerve with cochlea very nicely in fiesta sequence then star sequence when there is a pituitary transpenetral surgery done neurosurgeons put some pecking material in the nasal cavity uh, to prevent the um, uh, leaking to understand the what is the pe what is the pecking material and what is the tumor to differentiate is from there you have to ask for the uh, star sequence it can differentiate on the pituitary tumor from the but the fat looks bright and pituitary uh, looks dull that is called fat sat sequence or star sequence mrs is a understand the chemical nature of the brain to uh, grading the differentiation tumors so usually choline will get uh, will get choline creatinine and na na is the na still aspartate which is the neuronal activity so na is a good metabolite choline is a bad metabolite choline will increase in the malignant lesions lipid lactate will increase in the necrosis and lymphoma lesions so if you see the if you want to grading the tumor low grade or high grade you have to take the choline creatinine ratio if you choline creatinine ratio is below 2 or roughly less than 2 is considered the low grade glioma more than 2 is the high grade glioma sometimes when there is a confusion about the meningeal lesions and any other lesions you please go for the alanine MRIs. 
Emaranjo, you want to study the very vessels, you have to start, go for the stenosis, occlusion, sanium, aneurysms, abnormality, then we have to go for Emaranjo. MR perfusion sequence, it is important when there is a new angiogenesis happens in the big uh, high grade tumors, you have to end up, uh, if there is a doubt, but starting from the differentiate with the necrosis, recurrence and uh, progression, uh, you, you can go for the MR perfusion study and in a study looks, uh, um, it, it is a color differentiated uh, uh, area, how it looks more uh, malignant. As I told, gradient eco sequence, as you told, the mostly CP angle tumors having cyst, bleeds, microcyst, it happens in the swanoma component to the, uh, to the meningioma. And this gradient eco sequence will tell you there is a blooming effect in the gradient eco sequence. So this is the blooming effect, but in meningioma, we will not find this microcyst and other things. Don't write, please. Then analyzing a brain tumor on CT and MR. How to analyze a brain tumor on CT scan or MR? So there are lots of things to analyze. There are 30 parameters you have to analyze. So where is the origin? Where is the, what is the shape? What is the size? What is the size? Starting from the multiplanar evaluation, you have to 28 to 30 parameters you want to see. Let's see one by one. So this is the origin. You have to see the it is intraaxial or extraaxial. See, this is the meningioma. This is the pituitary adenoma. These are mostly from the extraaxial lesions. But in the parenchymal lesions, mostly is the intraaxial lesions. Then intraaxial versus extraaxial, you can see the CSF clefts between the um, normal brain tumor and tumor. You will get the CSF uh, coupling or CSF the cleft. Intensity, you have to see the which intensity, how it looks like, uh, either hyperintense or hypointense. Side, which side, it is a right side or left side. Which shape, it is a irregular shape, globular shape, circular shape, mostly um, like a pituitary adenomas, germinomas, um, all this looks good, well differentiated margins, but when the high grade malignant lymphomas, GBMs, that is irregular shape. Size of the tumor, you have to measure from the uh, diameter, from the horizontal, vertical, and axial diameter to understand the size of the tumor. Margins, you, you can see the margins are irregular, infiltrative margins, and uh, some tumors are clear cut no? margins. Tentorial distribution, mostly medulloblastomas, peanuts, and uh, like these are the mostly supratentorial, and some gliomas, and uh, in the adult population, it mostly supratentorial. Lower, lower. So why it is really more important? You have to understand the pathology. So maybe frontal lobe, parietal lobe, or brain stem, or uh, other lobes. Lower location, this is the frontal lobe location. Whether it is crossing the midline, yes. Some lymphomas, cerebral um, um, corpus callosum tumors, they will cross the midline. Gray matter versus white matter, whether it is a, in gray matter, or white matter, or junction, mostly. Uh, the metastatic lesions usually uh, on the junction. Local spread also you have to spread, see how much spread to the other part of the like uh, meninges or um, uh, spinal canal, blood vessels, you have to understand the local spread. Single versus multiple, you have to find out what, whether it is a single or multiple single lesions. You can see, tell about the gliomas, multiple lesions like oh, in malignant metastatic lesions. Edema, you have to see how much edema is there. Disproportionate edema, proportionate edema, no edema. So these things you have to do uh, edema. Midline shift, you can see the midline shift here. How much midline shift, you have to put a scale uh, here and you can measure the how much midline shift is there. Means there is a high midline shift. Uh, you can measure, you can see the midline shift around 0.1 centimeter. Then ventricular effacement, if it is compressing the ventricle, any ventricular obstruction or effacement, you can see the ventricular effacement. Ventricular obstruction, mostly midline tumors around the third ventricular location tumors, it causes ventricular obstruction. Calcification, you may get some calcifications, mostly uh, craniopharyngiomas, cortical tumors, um, meningiomas, some calcification type punctate, nodular, cluster, ring, coarse type of calcifications. You want to see the any bleed is there inside or any calcification, you can go with the susceptibility weighted image and ask your system um, radiologist to give the susceptibility weighted image to find out the 
then cystic solid or solid substituting component any tumor may be cystic may be solid or may be solid cystic you have to find out uh, mostly solid cystic components are in the gliomas like gvm and all things and solid components all, uh, you can find in schwannomas meningiomas enhancement which type of enhancement either ring enhancement he enhancement subtle enhancement or types of enhancement you have to find out diffusion restriction and whether it is a diffusion uh, is there or no diffusion if there is a diffusion restriction the image looks brighter the lesion looks brighter and the corresponding adc map looks darker chemical composition of mrs value chemical composition if you do the mrs just one hello हाँ 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 को था जोर्जन है ना सो वी हैव टू सी द क्रिएटिन कोलिन एने लैक्टेट लिपिड्स वी हैव टू सी दैट परफ्यूजन स्कैन इफ यू हैव अवेलेबल यू सी द परफ्यूजन इट इज मोर ब्राइटर और समथिंग मोर रेड दिस कलर डिफरेंशिएशन विल हेल्प यू टू मोर भास्कुलरिटी रीजनल ब्लड फ्लो skull reactions if there is a meningioma con long standing there will be skull reactions like a hyperostosis in the meningiomas and all things meningeal situation you have to see the pyometer arachnoid matter and all these meningeal situations so normally um, uh, this pi arachnoid matter does not enhance you can see the enhancements and it is looks like a uh, csf spread and uh, leptomeningeal metastasis If it is a tractography, any lesion which goes through the tract to the other part of the uh, brain or continues the tract, it will help you to delineate properly if you have tractography. Multiplanar evaluation, any tumor you have to play uh, lesion is the where is the lesion axial, coronal, and sagittal, and at last you have to give the summary in form of a uh, uh, three to four lines and then differential diagnosis. so this is the main basic things you have to find out uh, the things for the uh, mri and ct then planning mri for metastasis if you are a plan see planning mr always mr brain t1 t2 3d fs pgr no gap no tilt neutral neck one mm slice 512 matrix and full echo this is constant for all planning mrs but when you are going for metastasis you have to go for double contrast triple contrast and pillar contrast so this is the uh, slide i usually give to the radiologist uh, on this basis you go for the uh, planning mr uh, and uh, like a uh, uh, planning mr for trigeminal neuralgia you can see the we need uh, apart from the normal planning mr we have to give for fiesta sequence t to for cochlea mr and for the vessels uh, cystinography and for ct and mr you have to need same and same slides CT cystinography is a procedure where you give contrast in the spinal can um, through spinal puncture. You will get a contrast mode with foot and elevation to understand the cranial nerves, ventricle systems, and the brain stem. So this is CT cystinography. So you can see the ventricles nicely, but it is not as clear as the MRI. So like that, you can if you go for the MRI, if you want to take through a minute and cranial nerve delineation properly, you can go if like trigeminal neuralgia. You can see the MR cystinography. You can see the trigeminal neuralgia how looks so bright, but uh, uh, resolved. So MR cystinography mostly used for for the even if early there is a CSF leak or some. Uh, um uh, planning for the trigeminal neuralgia so you can see this is the mr is the conflict between the artery and uh, nerve uh, in um, for the trigeminal neuralgia you have to learn but uh, this is no uh, later we can talk this about avms again from the planning mr we need 3d dsa mr axial slice so 3d dsa is a digital substruction angiogram where angio means blood vessels substruction means Uh, substruction of bony and soft tissue structures so 3d digit 3d uh, no, digitally substructed angiograms uh, to uh, need the vessel see the vessels if the, this is the machine cr we can know when you are the uh, interventional uh, uh, interventional uh, 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 so interventional uh, procedures Uh, CR intervention by the interventional radiologist 
uh, interventional radiologist you can see um, as per the uh, dsa digital subtracted angiogram for the avm procedures cranial avms mostly um, you can see there is a labia feeding artery there is a needles and a, then a, a feeding venous drainage so in this to understand this structure the dsc is the very important and uh, this is the how it is the um, uh, nidus you can see here this is the avm is the dsc is the uh, gold standard for the arteriovenous malformation so either 2d 3d 4d dsa we have to do many more evaluation process but sometimes dsa is not easily available in your uh, uh, vicinity you can go for the directly mr angio you can see here how the nidus is so beautifully seen and that that has to be targeted in our srs this is a temporal avm uh, this is the mr angio and ct angio you can see here to target this area this is the basal ganglial ct angio shows nidus and this is the avm avm on various mri sequences you can see this is the blackish on t1 bright, brighter blood vessels in the t2 t2 player again it is darker t1 contrast it may be nidus may be enhanced and mr angio it looks nidus looks more uh, uh, bright and t1 contrast also uh, it can help you to delineate the but mr angio is better than all sequences planning mri for the vestibular schwannoma uh, again, apart from the normal planning mri we need specific sequences called five fiesta the c sequence mostly cranial nerves and brain stem so in the vestibular schwannoma imaging where the, uh, we have to see the erosion of the widening of the canal or uh, we we use need to the see the cystic component and we have to see the give the contrast enhancement so you can see the vestibular schwannoma how it looks it is looks like a ice cream cone appearance of the vestibular schwannoma apart from the um, normal planning mr in pituitary adenoma we need a fit start or start sequence or fiesta sequence for the cranial nerve and vein stem evaluation as you know uh, pituitary adenoma uh, 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 mostly you need a t2 image you can see in a t1 contrast you cannot see the cavernous sinus involvement uh, it no, no, not appreciated properly but if you take a t2 or player image you can see the how the it is this here this is, you cannot tell here in t1 there is no uh, either involvement of contrast involvement of cavernous sinus or not but in t2 you can see there is no cavernous sinus involvement but abuting the cavernous sinus sometimes the packing materials to differentiate from the packing Taking materials to differentiate in the pituitary adenoma from the tumor. Taking materials to differentiate so differentiating from the packing material you can see this is the packing material and uh, this is the pituitary okay so for this reason you have to take a fat such sequence or star sequence that will differentiate from the uh, pituitary adenoma to um, uh, pituitary adenoma to uh, uh, packing material. from meningiomas again we need some delayed contrast image Fat such sequence again for the uh, packing material, cranial nerves. Apart from that, you can ask for the total scan for the PET CT. PET, uh, so, this is the thing where the, we need mostly contrast enhanced MRI. Apart from the DOTA scan, the meningioma strongly expresses the somatostatin receptor subtype 2. It improves your target delineation and definition and complex meningiomas, also like skull based meningiomas, where you are not able to differentiate between the vascular structures or the bony structures, you can take the help of DOTA scan. So, where it is mostly useful, more the most skull based meningiomas. So, your target volume delineation definitely changes with your. Uh, a DOTA scan. Re radiation is another important structure uh, thing. Re radiation, whether patient having, uh, we are going for re radiation, you have to understand the, whether it is a pseudo progression or necrosis or recurrence. 
So for, for this reason, we have to do MRS, perfusion scan, and a PSM scan. So if there is a lesion, you are post RT uh, lesion, we don't know whether it is a necrosis, it is a recurrence or something, then what you have to do, we have to do the MRS. If MRS lipid lactate peak is there, it is metastatic. If choline peak is there, it is the recurrence. Perfu so in progression, they usually no new enhancing lesion, increase choline peak, decrease NA level and increase perfusion. In necrosis, enhancing lesion, slightly increase in choline peak, near normal NA value, increase lipid lactate, decrease perfusion. This, these are the four lines will differentiate your progression from the necrosis. Sometimes pseudo progression, usually after three months of radiation, there will be enhanced. Why? Because there is a uh, blood disruption of the blood brain barrier. It will, and it is more seen in with the people are treated with radio RT and timozolamide. So there is a decrease, but there will be, but, uh, there will be enhancement, but there will be decreased perfusion. In a pseudo response, in a, another situation where if you are treating with a patient with recurrent tumors or necrotic tumor or near necrosis to st stabilize or normalize the blood vessels, you can uh, give some avastin or vivasuzumab. Usually, you use after avastin, you vivasuzumab use you, the blood vascular normalizes, and there will be a patient benefit of the normal vasculature. So, this is called pseudo response. In uh, sometimes when you are going for the re radiation, we usually ask for the PSMS scan. And uh, this PSM scan helps to delineate more tissues, uh, more radiation, uh, more tissue for the uh, uh, resolution for the radiation. Other rare conditions like glossopharyngeal neural schwannoma, jugular schwannoma is also helpful for the contrast images like cavernomas, hypothalamic hamartomas. So this sequence, as I told, pituitary, you need star, trigeminal, you need Fiesta sequence, cranial nerve CISS, CP angle GRE, Glioma diffusion perfusion, ABM angio, grading is MRS, and metastatic double triple diffusion perfusion delayed contrast is required. We will now go for the MRI spine sequences. Why MRI spine sequence is very important? Is in you know as, uh, as we are going to adopt the uh, uh, SVRT in the spine. Uh, this is the vertebral body here. This is a uh, as you know, this is the vertebral body, this is the vertebra vertebral foramen, this is the pedicle, this is the lamina, this is the spinous process. Most of the laminectomy process, they, they will um, dissect this area. According to the ISRS guidelines, uh, though there are uh, the all vertebras what come, uh, divide into six sectors. One, it is a clockwise. One, first vertebra, two is the pedicle, uh, left pedicle, and the transverse process third, this according to four is the spinous process, uh, fifth is the right side components, and this is the six components from the cervical, thoracic, and the lumbar vertebra. If you see anteriorly, this is the um, vertebral body, you will find the thickal sac here. These are the cranial nerve, sorry, uh, this is the uh, nerve roots, and uh, this is the dorsal ganglion and neuro, neural foramen and dorsal ganglions. Uh, 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 just um, uh, the dorsal ganglions. This is the uh, for the, um, uh, when you are planning for CSI, you have to control this area. Just so. Uh, so this uh, this is the uh, this is how it looks a spinal cord and uh, thickal matter uh, thickal matter and uh, you can see in the sacral area this is the spinal canal a sacral canal how it looks brighter with CSF and these are the various bone muscles and uh, this is the ala and this is the muscle. So uh, you can see here vertebral body this is the intervertebral disc. This is CSF looks brighter. This is the black and white, the spinal cord, and this is the interspinous ligament, conus medullaris, and this is the spinal cord. This is the spine. How you, when you are going for the CSI or um, um, or you want to see the where is the spinal cord ends here, you can see slight change in the dense intensity of these MRI. You can see this is the conus medullaris. So what are the spine sequences usually we find T1, T2, STAR, T1 contrast, Dixon, DWI, and SWI. So what are the things? Basic sequence are T1, T2, and post-contract inversion inquiry. Advanced sequence are uh, 
uh, multi diction sequences, diffusion weighted image, susceptibility to image, and contrast images. So let's see how to identify the MRI sequences. What is T2? What is the T2? T1? What is the star? Listen, if your CSF is black, if your CSF is black, think that it is a T1 sequence. If CSF is white and abdominal fat is white uh, or back fat is white, abdominal fat or back fat is white, it is a T2 sequence. If only CSF is bright, but abdominal fat is dark or um, um, back, muscle, back fat is dark, it think that it is a star sequence. So this, these three images will help you, which is T1, which is T2, star. Again, I'm telling you, when CSF is dark, it is a T1. When CSF is white, it is a T2. And abdominal CSF plus abdominal fat is a T2. If abdominal fat is dark, but CSF is white, it is a star sequence. Why T? Usually, the metastatic lesions, usually mostly hypointense and T1. If you take T2, T1 contrast, it may enhance. Dynamic post contrast is more enhanced. T2 weighted image usually hyperintense. But if you take inversion dequeravaric sequence, even more brighter than T2, it will help you delineate uh, properly. See, in the this T2 sequence, the posterior vertebral body is not darker. It is not showing any uh, changes. But in this uh, inversion dequeravaric sequence, whole vertebra is involved. So this is the beauty of the IR sequence. Then we have to take the diffusion weighted sequence as like brain. If there is a restriction, you will see the brighter on the CT. And if you have a osteolytic um, um, lesions or osteoblastic lesion, if there is a confusion, you can go for the susceptibility weighted image. So that will differentiate between uh, osteoblastic and osteolytic. So how our volume changes with T1, T2 diffusion? You can see here in the CT scan, this is the lesion. If you go for the T1 contrast, this is the volume. If you go for the T2 for contrast, T2, it is the volume changes. If you go for the IR sequence, you see how it changes, the volume drastically changes. If you add the diffusion weighted image, you fuse the diffusion weighted image, you can see the volume is larger than the CT, even double the CT images. So this is the all about the MRI. Another 15 minutes, I will take you the uh, around to the radiology of diffuse astrocytomas. So diffuse astrocytomas, you can see mostly low-grade gliomas. It mostly you see CT looks like high-point hypodense lesions. Contrast also hypodense lesions. Usually no enhancement. But if there is a diffuse astro on CT, sometimes the cortical enhance cortical calcification in the plain images, it is a significance of oligodendroglioma. Usually in a T1, it looks hypointense. T1 contrast, there will be no enhancement, almost looks like T1 and T1 contrast, same. T2, it looks like brighter, hyperintense. T2 player, again hyperintense, that area, no, not much edema. Perfusion, there will be no hyperperfusion at that area, no hyperperfusion. Susceptibility ima weighted image, if there is a blooming or a hemorrhage, it may be seen in the oligodendrogliomas. Diffusion weighted images, you can see there is no diffusion weighted restriction, mostly favors of the low grade glioma, no diffusion restriction. In MRS, you can see there is no much choline creatinine ratio, uh, and you can see it is mostly 1.46 or below 2. T2 clear mismatch sign, this is the main uh, mismatch sign. Mostly the tumors with IDH mutant, it will have a T2 player mismatch. What is that T2 player mismatch? See, this is the T2 image. This is the player image. If you compare these two images, this T2 images, you can see there is a change in the density. There, if there is a, um, um, there should not be any change actually T2 to T2 player unless there is, unless the normal fluids, but there is a change. If there is a T2 player mismatch, definitely you think that mostly it is going toward either radiogenomics of uh, IDS mutant glioma. If there is a uh, um, um, blooming effect and a susceptibility to image, image like uh, calcifications, uh, things think that is a oligodendroglioma. You can go for this T2 player mismatch sign present, uh, maybe non. Uh, uh, if T2 player mismatch sign is present, it is a IDS mutant. If it is blooming effect, it there is a 
1p19 cube co-deleted or oligodendroglioma. So this is the um, diffuse um, low grade glioma. Let's see the radiology of glioblastoma. Glioblastoma, how it looks? Again, it is irregular, hyper intense. So it may be big mass, edema, mass effect, enhancement, heterogeneous enhancement, thick enhancing wall, necrosis, both cystic solid component, calcification is rare, hemorrhage is rare. So if you see big mass, usually glioblastoma looks with common with big mass with more edema. You can see the fluid edema. This is the edema on, with compressing the mass effect, compressing the other part of the brain. And you can see the mostly solid and cystic component, solid and cystic component. And uh, you can see the heterogeneous enhancement. Cystic component will not enhance and periphery will be enhanced. So this is the uh, thick, thick enhancing wall. So you will see thick enhancing wall. Apart from that, if there is a peritumoral infiltration uh, beyond the wall, it is a significant of uh, um, glioblastoma separating, separating from the metastatic lesion, mostly solid. And if there is a necrosis, there will be a cystic component. Diffusion weighted image, there will be definite rest restriction with there and it will be brighter on the diffusion weighted image. ADC values are very less and uh, high ADC values are with the uh, low C, uh, blood flow is correlated them. If there is a high ADC value, GVM, it may be a MGMT promoter with a good uh, prognostic significance. So choline creatinine ratio will be more here. You can see high choline peak and uh, MR perfusion, you can see there is a hyperperfused area around the lesion. And uh, radiogenomics of IDH and mutant, as I told uh, before. Radio last part is the radiology of brain metastasis. Mostly lung, renal cell carcinoma, breast cancer, melanomas. So this is the looks like how it metastasis look like in CT. So mostly hemorrhagic metastasis are the, from the RCC, choriocarcinoma, thyroid, and plain CT. Melanoma has the hemorrhagic metast uh, metastasis. You can see here multiple lesions. Ah, metastatic lesions are mostly multiple. Gray white junction, that you will mostly find on the gray white junction, not in the in internal part or outer part. Importance of MRI technique, it is disproportionate edema. Comparing to the lesion, the edema component is very high. So this is called disproportionate edema. Ring enhancement, you will not find peritumoral enhancement. You will not find peritoneal infiltration. It will differentiate from the uh, metastasis. Sometimes you will get blue, blue eye sign with uh, clear cut uh, round shape. If you give double contrast or delayed contrast, you see it may resolution more. So this is the high resolution. And if you give, if there is a single dose, you can see with double dose, there may be another enhancement. If you give the delayed contrast, again, more enhancement, triple dose, again, more enhancement. So uh, if you take more Tesla, like 1.5 to 3 Tesla, again, more uh, clear. So any metastatic lesions, uh, no, you can see here delayed image, contrast no lesion, 10 minutes no lesion, slight lesion, small lesion, but 15 minutes there is a big uh, definite lesion. So always you take delayed contrast, double dose contrast uh, uh, with more Tesla. Another uh, galbuterol is the another uh, uh, contrast. If you put galbuterol and more, there will be more resolution. So if you want to, sometimes how to differentiate from the GVM to metastasis if there is a single lesion metastasis. Remember, so if there is a mostly hyperperfusion in the GVM, in metastasis, usually less, uh, not, not normal perfusion. And metastasis, you will see there is a lipid lactate peak. Lipid, because of necrosis, you will get lipid lactate peak, but in GVM, um, GVM, you will get a choline peak. Remember, glioblastoma, choline peak, metastasis, the lactate peak. So MRS conclusion, uh, uh, mostly uh, glioblastoma has a choline and lactate peak. Absence of creatinine peak in, indicates the um, um, uh, indicates the uh, metastasis. No lipid signal excludes the metastasis. There is a uh, solitary brain mats and uh, with the high glioma, as I told. If there is a no peripheral uh, um, deposit or peripheral enhancement uh, beyond beyond ring enhancement, it is metastasis. If peritumoral enhancement is there, it mostly goes the favor of glioblastoma when there is a solid lesion in the brain when you are a confusion. So I have a clear criteria. What is the known cancer history? Lipid lactate peak, 
and absence creatinine peak goes to the uh, metastasis. Disproportionate edema is goes to metastasis. Gray white junction goes to the metastasis. Peripheral limb sign is goes to the metastasis. So in summary, CT and MRI should be same thickness, flat cows, discuss with radiology, fuse properly, delineate with radiologist, get the result. Thank you. Uh, um, the eighth, uh, June 8th is the World Brain Tumor Day. And I have uh, started the uh, Brain Tumor Clinic for Oncologist International Network known as Bitcoin. You can call me, you can con uh, create your Zoom link, and you can send. Usually after six, uh, seven, uh, 6 to 7 p.m., I can uh, help do the target delineation for the newcomers. Uh, we can see the case dissection, plan evaluation, physics plan evaluation through Zoom. Apart from that, uh, I can take radiology classes for the uh, radiation uh, oncologist. Apart from the stereotaxic classes and uh, target delineation from the glioma to the uh, prostate and uh, neuro-oncologist classes for the various common tumors and uh, plan evaluation things. Thank you very much for the giving the opportunity and these are the various uh, uh, educational activities I have initiated. You can go for the SRS, SRBT, SBRT task forces, you can join. You can follow the educational onco cartoons and all my presentations are available in the slide set freely. And uh, uh, this is the thank you. Uh, uh, thanks to all teachers. And uh, thank you so much. Any questions you have, you can ask. And I, I love to answer the questions. Kanu, it was an excellent class. Thank you. Thank you, Tanvir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kanu, for a fantastic presentation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank and you. definitely, I'm fond of your classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, you regularly share. I hope you will also share the uh, slides and videos ah, yeah, yeah. We'll because no. I missed some sort of uh, slides due to uh, OPD. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I will share. No problem. Anybody has questions, they can chat, uh, write in the chat box or uh, I can ask directly. If there is no questions, uh, we'll uh, stop the um, um, presentation here. You can directly uh, um, send the uh, 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 you can send the questions directly to the me, my email, or you can call me directly. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll close here the presentation. So, so should I uh, close the room for today's uh, yeah, session? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.